Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today I'm going to try and fix this annoying stick drift that's happening on this right analogue stick. So you can see I'm not touching it now, but yet the camera, which is on the right analogue stick, is constantly moving up. Just slowly, it's only 20% out, but that's enough to make it really unplayable because you're constantly having to compensate by just moving it down ever so slightly and then every time you relax or let go it starts moving up again. Okay, so on some games it's not noticeable, but then if you were to play it on a game where you're using the right analog sticks, such as Fortnite, then it really is noticeable. So what we're going to do in this video is we're just going to try the simplest techniques to begin with. So to start with, I'm just going to use some IPA alcohol on a cotton bud and I'm just going to clean it around the place and then if that doesn't help I'm actually going to use like a contact cleaner it's like an aerosol that I spray into it and if that doesn't help then I'm going to have to take it apart and I'm going to try and clean it again if all of that doesn't make a difference then I'm going to try to solder in a new analog stick now obviously the best thing to do is to replace the analog stick completely but it depends on what's causing this if something's been spilt into this then the chances are we could fix it just by cleaning it. But if it's down to wear or if there's a part broken in there, then cleaning it isn't going to make a blind bit of difference. So let's try and fix it. And then I'm going to show you a program on a little laptop to show you how I know it's 20% out. And then if I do fix it, we'll come back to Fortnite at the end and we'll see if it stops doing that. Right, let's get started. Right, okay, so I've got the Xbox controller plugged in via a micro USB cable into a little Windows 10 laptop. And I've downloaded this little program in the top right hand corner here. You see it says Game Controller. So this is basically Game Controller Tester. And this is the free one from the Windows Store. You can also get this on your Xbox as well. But for me, it's just easy to use it when I'm on my uh, little laptop here because it just makes it nice and easy for me to do it without constantly plugging it into the Xbox with a little TV. So if you look now, I've got to put the uh, view and menu button down together to put it into test mode. So I'm just going to hit those two. And now already you can see the right analog stick, which is this one here, is not centering properly. So left one perfect, right one not. So watch this now. When I move the left one about, you can see that it centers itself nice. But on this right one here, every time I move it around, it moves around fine, but then it doesn't center itself. And that's what's causing the stick drift. So that's a nice easy way to test it without constantly having to get up and go into the Xbox. So let's first of all do the easiest one. I think what I'm going to do, the very first one, is I think I'm going to use just some of this air duster here. So I'm just going to blow it into this side bit here, just moving it all the way around, getting into this bit here, all the way around here while moving it around, just to see if that clears anything out, see if it makes any difference. Then after that, I'm going to use some IPA and see if that makes a difference with just a little Q-tip. And then if that doesn't work, I'm going to use this here, which is some old tape head disk drive cleaner. And good thing about it is it's an aerosol again, so I'm going to be able to spray it right into it. If none of that works, then I am going to have to take it apart. But I'm going to go from easiest to hardest, because obviously everybody wants the easiest way of fixing it. Right, so here we go. Right, move it around. Now I'm going to plug it in and see what it does, see if it makes any difference at all. Right, so with this app, normally I have to, uh, yeah, I have to go out of it and back into it again. Again, you can see that hasn't made a blind bit of difference. It's still not centering itself. Yeah. Okay, so that hasn't worked. So let's now try the IPA with the with the Q-tip. And we're going to basically just drown it in there, put absolutely loads in, because it's all going to evaporate off anyway. So it's not going to cause any damage to it. I'm just going to put loads down there. Let me zoom in so you can see it all flooding in. And I'm going to work it round. Give it a few clicks, get it all in there. In fact, I'm going to click it down now so it's got easy access to get in there. Now this is why taking it apart would be much better because right now 
remember there's uh, I don't know if you've ever seen the inside of these but basically there's like a dome that goes over the actual analog stick so most of this is just going to be going straight past it but if we can kind of give it a shake around the place then some of it might work its way in to the actual movement itself now actually I should be wearing gloves with this stuff because it really irritates my hands so I'm just going to pop some gloves on Okay, the outside of it's evaporated off, but there still will be some of the inside. But I'm going to test it now, and then uh, we'll see what happens. And if it is working, I can always leave it for a good 15 or 20 minutes just to make sure everything's completely gone from the inside, because I did put a lot in there. Can you see that? It's still moving up. So it hasn't made any difference at all. So let's go on to the third technique. But yet, you see, if you had dirt and stuff around there, that probably would have sorted that out. So if something spilt in there and it was like a sticky stick, then uh, that would have probably sorted it. But no, that's made no difference at all. Right, let's move on to the next one. I'm going to be basically using this to spray it straight into here. So very similar to what I did with the canned air on the first one. So the good thing about this is it's going to go in there with quite a force, so there's more chance of it clearing or bouncing back and getting into the actual analog stick. When I used this on the Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons it worked really well. I had a faulty Joy-Con with really bad drift and it fixed it just with a few sprays of that and it's still working now a couple of months later but I'm thinking it probably will fail again but it's no bother because I've already got this just to give it a couple more sprays and then hopefully I might get another couple of months out of it right let's try this one <laughs> no it's still happening so we're gonna have to take this one apart if you have a look here still moving up not every single time but it didn't do it every single time beforehand just the majority of times well right, okay let's take this controller apart and then see if we can put the spray directly into it and see if that fixes it okay so we're going to pop the battery out of it and we're going to pop off these side bits here so I'm just going to get a my finger under there I'm using a pry tool here just to pop it off at the edges you can see the uh, IPA and also the tape head cleaner has gone all the way over there Now with these often it feels like you're going to break them but they're pretty strong so you can really be quite rough with them and they hopefully won't snap on you. Now I'm going to have to undo all these little screws here and there's also one screw hidden under this little sticker at the back here and these are Torx security screws and I'm going to be using a T9. So now you see we have it out so all we have to do is pop off the analog stick and that's the problem when you're spraying in most of the spray is going round and it's just going onto this plastic here and some will go down here but really you need to take it off so you can get right into here because this is where one of the sensors are and this is where the other sensor is so we really need to be going right into here so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using this tape head cleaner again this one and I'm going to be spraying all into here just to see if it will start working this time now that I've got full access into it. Don't worry if it gets stuck up like that, it's supposed to, it's because it hasn't got the cap and the uh, 
the hole here. So basically, it always springs back until you go right the way over, then it doesn't spring back. But it makes it easier for me to get in here now. Now, if you're happy with soldering, you can actually get these really cheap. You can get them for about £3 on eBay. So they're very, uh, very cheap. Sometimes you can get like two of them for £4. see if that's going to make a difference if it doesn't we can actually strip it down further and we will be able to get to that little black thing in here you have one at the bottom here for the left and right so that one here does left and right and this one here does up and down so actually you can see it moving now and the lights bouncing off it now be careful because these little motors will keep popping out on you I'm going to test it now when it's still apart, see if it's made any difference. No, it's still exactly the same as it was before. So if you have a look there now. Yeah, it's still exactly the same. So let's strip it down even further. Right, so what I'm going to do is, I haven't done this before, but I'm going to lever off this green bit here at the top and then I'm going to just gently go down the sides and try to lever it out hopefully it will pop out Right, okay, so now I have access to that black thing on the inside, so I should be able to, there you go. I'm gonna get some tweezers and I'm just gonna pop that out. If I turn it upside down, it'll probably just fall out, but I wanna just show you how it comes out. And then I'll know as well by watching the video back how it goes back in. There we go, okay, this thing here. So it's gonna go in with those bits at the bottom those two black dots go will go in at the bottom and it will go in that way like that right i am going to give this a clean i'm going to have a good close look in here to see if i can work out what's going on right i'm going to get some ipa and i'm going to clean that with a little cotton bud So I'm thinking it must be this kind of track at the top here. It looks like there's a, uh, a bit, you see this bit here that's moving up and down. I'm thinking that this is the thing that must register. And it does seem to be just a tiny little bit of dirt on the cotton bud there, a tiny little bit. Maybe it doesn't take much to throw it out. See, maybe what you can do is, if you can't buy replacement ones of these, it will, well actually, even if you can, it will probably be cheaper to buy the whole analog stick for like two or three pounds. And then if you didn't want to get involved in soldering, I wonder whether you could just take out this disc from the new analog stick and put it in there. I wonder if this is the important part or whether it's the, the rest of the analog stick. I'm thinking this must be the thing that does all the registering, so I say this is pretty important. I don't want to press too hard because I don't want to flatten it. Now I'm also going to clean in this part here, in this little bit. And not just on the metal, but I'm also going to go on the green plastic here as well. See what happens there. When you do that, that white thing's moving that way and that way which is obviously moving this metal contact against this outer one here on the uh, you see this outer one here I'm wondering if it's not the metal one if this one's the more important one the one on the actual green bit 
Now, I'm not going to concentrate on this one because this is actually okay at the moment. Now, that's not to say it's not going to go faulty in a few days' time, or a week's time, or a month's time, but it's fine at this moment in time anyway. Okay, now, that definitely does seem to be dirtier, the cotton bud, doesn't it, when I go on to that one. I'm going to leave it because I can always clean it again. I don't want to overdo it. I can always come back and clean that. So I'm going to let it all dry off and then put it back together. Right, so we're going to put it in the reverse of how it went out. Which looks to be like that. Yeah, with that sort of metal loose thing up the top. Now that should just uh, clip back in. It's definitely not wanting to seat back in. There we go. Excellent. Right, okay, so I just need to get that bit in there. Yeah, so you have to line it up because obviously that white thing I showed you earlier is like the male and this black thing is the female. And uh, you have to make sure that they slot into each other. Right, okay, that's uh, definitely clipped in nicely. I'm not worried about that coming loose. It really did clip in very firmly. So let's put it back together and then I can uh, see if it works. Right, so we've got to hit the two buttons. Now let's see what's happening with this right analog stick. So far so good. Let's go all the way down. Yeah, it's not drifting. Now, if, if this was a fix, I don't know whether it's going to be a lasting fix, but if it was, it would definitely be a lot easier than having to solder it. Try the other one. Well, that looks perfect, doesn't it? And also, it's going to 100%. It didn't go to 100% before. Is that why at the bottom there? You probably can't see it. But beforehand, it went to about 95 down the bottom. It went to 100 up the top, but only 95 down the bottom. And the X is going to 100 as well, but that always did. Definitely the Y only went to about 90 something. Do you know what? I'm happy with that. I think what, this is what I think, I could be completely wrong. I think it wasn't so much that metal thing that I was cleaning. I think it was more to do with the, uh, you know, the, the, the black, let's just call it a carbon track. I really don't know what it is, but I reckon it was more to do with that because when I used this on that, it did become more dirty. I mean, you can sort of see it's sort of more, uh, it's just an off-white greyish colour. I think I'm happy with that. I think I'm going to see okay, so if it's all fixed. Right. Okay.
on now so I just need to clip these into place like so and this one here really I should have tested it again after uh, before clipping these on I should have tested it when I had all the screws in it but still hopefully it's going to be fine right so we're going to do it one more time on the laptop and then we're going to connect it to the Xbox and see what it does okay so There we go, no more stick drift. Now I'm just going to check all the vibration and everything on here as well. Yeah, that's perfect, that's not going away from green at all. I honestly think that might be a lasting repair. Just make sure it still does small movements. And uh, right, we've got a problem. We have got a problem. It's not going to 100%. It's only going to 82%. Look. Can you see there? 83%. Let's force it down more. Let me try and push it in. What's it gone to now? 63. Let me do the same on this one. Let's push it in. No, so this is going to 100% when I go down on the left one, even when I click it in. This one is not, it's only getting to 82%, so it's not going the full, we haven't got the full range. Now, I wonder what could be causing that. Let me give it a, let me give this cap a wiggle. I wonder how I got everything on perfectly straight. You know, when I was screwing back the board, I wonder whether there was a little bit of play in it. Take it apart again, and I'm going to see if there's anything to do with the lining up of it, because it was definitely 100% when the cap wasn't on it, but obviously now we're more restricted because it's going around the cover here. So let's take this apart again. Okay, so I tried many times removing that disc, bending it round all in different places, putting it out further, pushing it in, and it didn't make a blind bit of difference. I tried to adjust the screws and everything to see if there was any play on the front plate, because it does go to 100%, but not when it's all back together. So obviously I've lost the sensitivity that I had before. So unfortunately now there's nothing really else for me to do apart from change the analog stick. I tried cleaning it. I've, I've run out of ideas on that one, so obviously by me taking it apart and cleaning it, somehow I've made it less sensitive. So with, for example, when I go on this axis left and right, what happens is it gets to 100% before I get to the very, forget about with the cover on, but without the cover on, it gets to 100% before it goes right the way over. But on this one, it needs to go to the very bottom before it gets 100%, and also now on the top as well, it only goes to 100% when it's on the very top. So that axis is definitely, it's definitely lost its sensitivity. So I'm gonna unsolder these points here, and then I'm gonna solder in a new analog stick. I have re-soldered the wire here, and I've tested all the, uh, uh, the when you do the short buzz on the software, it, 
it can spin these and it can also spin the analog little motors as well because we have tiny little motors up here so when for example you're shooting in a game or when you're accelerating you can feel the vibration through here so it's kind of more immersive And now if I was to do the short buzz on the actual software, you can see that they're all going round. So you look one here, one here, one here and one here. Right, so uh, that's what we're going to be doing now. We're going to be desoldering the analog stick and then soldering a new one in. And hopefully that will be it sorted. Right, okay, so I've got a spare analog stick here. I don't know if it's any good or not because I've got a box load of Xbox One controller spares from eBay and this bag was in it and in this bag was a few analog sticks. Now, perhaps these are faulty and they were taken off and kept because maybe they were going to reuse the stick or, you know, this plastic part here or maybe they came off a faulty Xbox One controller but maybe these work absolutely fine. They're definitely not new because I can see that there's solder stains on the uh, solder marks on the actual pins themselves. But I'm, I'm gonna run with it and hopefully it will be okay. Now I've tested with the multimeter, I'm definitely getting a reading, but that doesn't prove to me whether it's gonna go 100% or not, but it definitely is doing something. So for example, if you go on the outer two pins here, then it doesn't do anything. You can see we've got three pins for this one, three pins for this one. I'm thinking the four pins here must be to do with the click in but I haven't actually checked it. And then all these other ones here must be just like the, the ground pins. So uh, if I go onto the outer two pins, it doesn't do anything, but if I go onto the middle pin and either one of the outer pins and I get a different reading, whether it's in the middle, this way, or this way, and vice versa when I'm on this one here, if I go this way and this way, it also changes the reading. Let me just quickly show you what I mean. So if I go to ohms, if I go onto the uh, middle pin and the outer pin there, you will see it will give me a reading. There you go, 5.5 kilo ohms. Now let's move the stick in one of the directions. Hold on now. There we go. Now let's try it. Right, and now we're getting one kilo ohm. And now let's go in the other direction. And now we're getting 9.7 kilo ohms, so you can see it definitely changes when we move this stick, which is of course what you would expect. So it's working, but whether it's working to the full travel or not, I do not know. So I'm going to unsolder this. I'm just going to leave it in its little home at the moment because I think I'll probably find it easier to work when it's like this. So I'm basically going to be using a solder sucker to suck the solder off. Now this is unleaded solder, so I'm going to be actually adding leaded solder to it to make a bigger blob and to make it easier to then suck the whole thing away. If this doesn't work, which it might not, what I'm going to do is use some solder wick and I'm going to cover this in flux as well and then hopefully between both of them I'll be able to get it sorted. So let me zoom right in now. I'm going to have my temperature at 300 degrees. That's 300 degrees Celsius. Right, I've got quite a few ones to do. I need to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 of them. See, when you add leaded solder to it, it just makes it so much easier to uh, get them off in one go. to blow away the fumes. Okay, there's still quite a few of them that are stuck, so, uh, but there's not many, so I'm just gonna try to use the wick. I haven't got any flux on it at the moment. Yeah, I'm gonna get the flux. I think that's just about ready to come out now. There we go, lovely. 
Right, so now what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to clean all this tacky flux off it because I don't want it stuck underneath the, uh, the new one. And then I'm going to pop the new one in and solder it back on. That's the flux I was using in case you're interested. Put this back in now, and hopefully it should go in nice. It can only fit in one way yet, so that fits in lovely there. So now it's just going to be a case of soldering it back together. I'm going to get my little laptop out, and I'm going to see now if it's working at 100% or not. Here we go, moment of truth, let's see if it's worked or not. Right, one second there. <laughs> Do you know what the problem is now? It looks like it must be a common problem. Look, the X axis is out. So again, the right one's fine, but look. See the X now is gone. So the Y is now fine. So the soldering worked, but the X axis is out. So obviously the analog stick that was taken out had a fault. Yeah, look, even if I go right the way over. Well, okay, annoyingly, that's got to come out again. So what I'm going to... Right, one more idea, just before I uh, change it out completely. We know on the old stick that the x-axis was perfect and the y was bad. We know on the new stick that the y-axis is perfect and the x is bad. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the x-axis off here in one go because I think the problem before, even though I cleaned it, I think it's more to do with the green part. So if you have a look, this is the inside of the green part, and this thing here moves around inside this. Yeah, so basically that's... Uh... Oh, hold on, let me just slot it in properly so you can see what it looks like. There we go. So that goes in there like so. So what I think is happening is, I think there's an issue with the green part, not the copper, but with the, uh, the track on the inside here. So I'm gonna try and just put in this particular part. So I've changed this one. This is the bad one here, and this is the, the good one on the X on the old stick here. So what I've done is I've unsoldered the three points from the bottom. So I haven't had to unsolder everything. I've just unsoldered the three, and now I'm gonna see if I can slot it back in. Now it might be too hard, but again, it's useful to know because it would save you having to change out the whole stick. So there we go, I've put the slots in there. Let's see if that, yeah, it clips in. So now I'm gonna solder up the underneath. I'm gonna solder up these three points again underneath and uh, we'll see if that works. And that will certainly be quicker than changing out the whole stick. Right, okay, good news as you can see there, that's the right analog stick, and it appears now to be going the whole 100%. I need to put the cover on to make sure that it's not being restricted in any way. Let's get the cover on. Are you ready? What do you reckon, yes or no? Success at long last, check it out, 100% on the X and then if I go this way you can see a hundred percent hundred percent a hundred percent so it was an epic it really was an epic but we got there eventually which is the main thing so the good thing about this now is it looks like we can just replace these bits here well in my instance anyway it looks like you can just replace this part of it in which case you can just unsolder the three points there now I don't know whether it's gonna be a lasting repair or not. I'm thinking it is because this just clips in 
And I don't think by taking this out you're doing any real damage to anything because that's how it's made. It just slots in there and obviously these bits of copper go around this track here and then the middle pin knows how far via resistance it's gone round. So uh, yeah, I think I would be tempted to do that repair again rather than, obviously if both axes were out then you're going to undo the whole thing. But, well I suppose you don't have to, again you could leave the ground pins in there but it's probably just as easy to undo the whole thing. But if it's just one side that's gone it's a lot easier to just to undo three of the solder points here rather than undoing do you know I'm thinking about it? Even if X and Y was gone, it's all you have to do is undo six solder points instead of having to undo, what did I say? It was 14, wasn't it? So it's a lot easier to undo six. So I think in future, I will be just buying spare analog sticks. And then these are the same for both of them. They look exactly the same on the X and Y. I think, I mean, I haven't swapped them, have I? All I've done is Y to Y and X to X. So I think they would be interchangeable between the two but then if you buy the one analog stick in theory then you can actually repair more than one controller if it was just one axis that had gone so uh, yeah do you know although this video was quite time consuming for me to do I learned a lot and I actually enjoyed this one so let's connect up this controller now to the Xbox and let's see now on Fortnite if the right analog stick is working perfectly or not there we go, check it out, it's not moving. So it's working absolutely perfectly. So I'm really happy with that repair. Now this is what I think. I think that if you had spilt something down there, so if some fizzy drink went down there, or if you had maybe two years worth of grime in there, then I do think that cleaning with either the head cleaner or IPA would do the job. But when it comes to anything else, I think you're gonna to have to take apart the controller and then either try to clean the inside or unfortunately if, if it's down to wear, so if you've been looking after your controller and it just starts happening then chances are it's probably down to wear, in which case then you're going to need a new analog stick. In this instance you've seen what I did in the end, well I, I replaced the analog stick which was also faulty, but that's my own fault, if you were to buy a new one that's not going to happen. But you did see that I just changed the actual X or Y axis part and it is now working. So that might be an option rather than unsoldering all 14 pins if you're just having problems on one of the axes and you might get away with just desoldering three pins and then soldering three pins, which might be useful if, for example, you're not very confident with soldering or if you haven't got a very good soldering iron. So now if you've done that, and it's worked well, then put it down in the comments. Obviously, if it hasn't worked well for you, again, put it down in the comments because then it's going to help other people reading it. For example, this one might fail now in a day's or a week or a month's time, in which case then it would have been better just to replace the whole thing. But if it's a long-lasting repair, then my opinion it's a lot easier to do that. But you guys might have already done this, and if you've done it and it's failed, definitely put it down in the comments because it will help other people out who's thinking about doing it because obviously the hassle of opening up the controller it would be much better just to replace the analog stick entirely rather than do that three pin repair to then have to do it again two months down the line but for this video I'm well happy with this and I'm happy that I learned a few things about the analog sticks as well so if you liked it I appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos take care bye now